Now we are going to talk about uh, radio frequency applications. As you see here, in this blue line we have the same frequency range starting from 3 kHz going to 300 gigahertz here and this is our wavelengths as you see so our wavelengths is decreasing as our frequency increases as you see here it's 100 kilometers but here is 1 millimeter when we go to very low frequency and low frequency we have maritime radio and navigation going to the middle frequency or intermediate let's say and high frequency we have radios so in the past we had only this part but now we have different kind of applications and these are like most recent applications as you see here the satellite and radio astronomy so let's continue with the frequencies here the very high frequency and ultra high frequency belongs to television and cell phones and here is the most important part that we use every day is ultra high frequency it belongs to mobile phones GPS Wi-Fi 3G and everything but when we go through really high frequencies the design gets really challenging and it belongs of course to satellite and radio astronomy one of the most important questions that comes to everybody's mind is why we have to operate in high frequencies why do why do we need that we are trying to answer this question in this slide first of all the frequency spectrum is quite fragmented and dense so what is the meaning of the, this as you see here in this frequency range we have lots of applications so in the past we didn't have these applications let's say so we, on, we only had radio and maritime and stuff like this and as you see it ended in 30 megahertz so we didn't ne really need to go to really high frequency but now the one of the reasons that we have to increase the frequency is this this frequency range range is already uh, allocated to different applications so basically we don't have any space here so in order to add different and extra applications we have to move to higher frequencies because we, we can't move to lower frequencies we just have to go further so you can imagine it's a corridor here and people are walking here and there are like few numbers of people but when we increase the number of people they won't be it will get so crowded and they won't be able to walk so the only thing that we can do here is increasing the widths of our corridor so this is the same thing. So we have to move to higher frequencies because we have uh, lots of the f applications and we have allocate each frequency band for each one. The other uh, things that we have to consider and there are the most important things here is we have to know the higher frequency signals has more efficiency efficiency in propagation and they are immune to noise and the most important part is um, if we want to make a small antenna we need to send high frequency and now we are going to talk about this okay let's go to the same table and talk about wavelengths a bit more there's a formula of wavelengths as we said wavelengths is the speed of light over frequency of oscillation so as we said the wavelengths is inversely proportional to the frequency and when we increase our frequency we have uh, low wavelengths so the thing is that the antenna's length L is proportional to wavelengths and it's very simple we, you can actually understand it like this imagine you have a wave here let's say like this and this is our wavelengths and we have want to capture this with antenna so our antenna should be like this you know the the length of antenna should be kind of proportional to the wavelength. So imagine that now we have uh, we have the we have the wave which has a higher wavelength like this. Let's say if we have the same size of antenna, we won't able to capture all of this wave. So we have to increase this, uh, the length of our antenna. So we can conclude here that 
our antenna's length is proportional to wavelengths. If we have higher, higher wavelengths, we have to increase the length of our antenna. And it's actually proportional to a quarter of lambda, let's say. This is the best explanation here. So let's make an example here. Let's say that we have a data and uh, we are going to send our data and this data is in a low frequency. So we don't want to send a very high frequency data. I even lower, like 20 kilohertz is even high, but just imagine that this is a low frequency. And I don't want to do anything to this frequency. I just directly connect it to an the antenna and send it to my system. I have two antennas here, imagine that. Let's anticipate the size of this antenna. For We can come to this uh, table, as you see. Uh, if we have a 20 kilohertz signal, the wavelength is like 25 kilometers, probably. Let's say. I don't know. I just estimate something like that. And now I can see here the length of antenna is proportional to the quarter of lambda. So I should make an antenna which has the length of almost, let's say, 5 kilometers, which is totally impossible. So what we do here, in order to send the signal, we have to increase our frequency. So we can't send a signal which has 20 kilohertz, because as you saw here, we need a very long antenna. Let's come to another point. There's a question that we always say we don't have a high frequency data all the time. What we can do, for example, we can say the human audible range is from 20 Hz to 20 kilohertz. We don't have a, our data is always in low frequency. Our systems, our computers, everything, mobile, the, the core of mobile is working maybe in 1 gigahertz, but maybe we want to send it in 3 gigahertz. Or like, as we said, the human voice is in a low frequency, but we have to send this low frequency with a very high frequency signal. What can we do? We say there is a solution for that, and we're going to explain right now. Okay, what we do here? Let's say we have a the very low fre uh, frequency signal, like 1 kilohertz here. And we want to s send the signal, but what, what we should do in order to avoid those problems we mentioned, we said that we want to solve a problem with antenna, actually. We s for 1 kilohertz, even we have a r uh, longer than the antenna we mentioned. So what we do? We send this data, we process this data in our system and increase the frequency of our data, then we send this data to antenna. So what we do, we have 1 kilohertz signal, it can be human voice. We process it, so it's, this is low frequency, and we do frequency shift. So let's say F shift. And we move this, this signal to a very high signal. We actually transfer it or convert it, like 1 gigahertz. And this is called frequency shift. So this is high frequency, let's say. And then we send out the signal. So our data is 1 kilohertz, but data which is sent to outside to a space and environment is, is a high frequency. And this is what we are doing in our transmitter, for example. Now, if it's 1 gigahertz, we will be able to make a very small sized antenna. So we have low frequency, and it's our data. In our system, we make frequency shift, and we convert it to the high frequency signal, and this high frequency signal has our data. Then we send to, to, to environment. We can see here, if this is a frequency domain, if this is F and this is, let's say, amplitude or what, data, something like that. So we have our data in low frequency, let's say 20 kilohertz. We want to send this data with our mobile, for example, cell phone. So first we have to shift this data to high frequency. So this is our low frequency and this is our high frequency. 
That's the thing that we are trying to do, in, for example, in our transmitter. We have something, we have a block, which is called TX or transmitter. We will explain it in upcoming sections, you don't have to worry about it. We have a low frequency data. We are increasing our frequency, high frequency, and shifting our data from a low frequency to high frequency and sending out to space or air. Thank you for watching our video. Please don't forget to subscribe. You can learn about this topic and more using our website. The complete course on this topic is provided on our website at www.rasoft.com. Rasoft is providing a complete certificate on radio frequency. The RF basic concepts and fundamentals course is provided free at our website. The courses are complete step-by-step -step approach with quiz and examples and certificate of completion will be provided upon finishing each course. By taking the required courses in RF system and IC design with pass status, RASAF would provide the RASAF radio frequency certificate. The topics are chosen with advice from RF engineers in top industry companies like Apple, Qualcomm, Broadcom and Skyworks who are missing candidates with these skills.